This episode is sponsored by our friends over at Keeps. I've got a really interesting and beautiful Rolex Explorer 2 here. And I'm going to show you this watch and tell you what makes it so special in just a little bit. Before I do, I'm going to tell you all about Rolex Explorer history. Now, I'm going to tell you why the Rolex Explorer is today the only true collection of Rolex watches in their catalog. And I'm going to tell you how it was all built on what is essentially a little white lie. The Rolex Explorer went to Mount Everest. It's just, it's just not true. It just, it just never happened. So let's back up. Let's tell you that story and, and let's get into what makes the Rolex Explorer 2 such an interesting and important part of Rolex history. So let's back up to 1953, May, I think, when Tenzig Norgay and Sir Edmund Hillary uh, reached the summit of Mount Everest. It was then on this expedition that these two men became uh, known by the world as the men to summit the world's highest peak. And they did bring with them a Rolex, a Rolex chronometer. It wasn't the only watch they brought. They also brought a Smith's, which survived just fine as well, even though the Rolex Explorer has gone on to get all the credit. And it wasn't a Rolex Explorer either. Again, it was a Rolex chronometer, not a member of a family, a family of watches. It wasn't, it wasn't labeled and marketed under a collection just a Rolex voice perpetual chronometer. So while it wasn't actually an explorer, it was the catalyst, it was the bedrock, the foundation of, right, that what would become that history. And later on that year, Rolex acted so quickly, they went into production mode and marketing mode and seized the moment, unlike Smith's. And they released their reference 6350, which was the first explorer. And the design is much more right, closely related to what we now know as the Rolex Explorer, because that original Explorer, that, that Explorer that summited Everest, looks nothing like what we know to be an Explorer. It was this, the 6350, that was the Explorer. And if we're being fair and technical, and it wasn't the same watch, it wasn't the same collection, it wasn't the same design, I mean, it virtually had very little to do with Everest. It was essentially a marketing ploy. And it's certainly worth noting that one of these watches sold at a Phillips auction in 2020 for $126,000. I do wonder what it'd be worth now. Now from there, from the, the 6350 and in 1953, Rolex is off to the races, right? A marketing machine, a production machine like the world had never seen to date and I don't think has ever seen since, right? That perfect balance that makes Rolex Rolex. And they, they, they marketed the hell out of this collection, right? Here's a really terrific ad. A little bit later, this, is ad, this ad is probably from the 80s. 80s, but Rolex was just packing this collection full of storytelling. Storytelling essentially about that accomplishment or accomplishments, you know, akin, right, within that same vein. And these ads are packed with power and they're packed with excitement. And these ads, not the watch itself, right, but these ads created that explorer lore, right? While it may be a smaller watch than the Submariner and today not as popular or maybe as masculine, right? Because it's not as bulky. The explorer historically has this deeply masculine kind of energy, right? I mean, or, or, or it's not just masculine, it's courageous, it's bold, it's daring. And those ideas are certainly aspired to by men all over the world, right? Those ideas know no language, right? They know no border. Uh, these ideas have been bought into, right? From New York to, you know, Abu Dhabi to Delhi, right? It, it's, it's, it's just a fundamentally human idea that Rolex was able to package in the wake of a great accomplishment, of someone else's great accomplishment. Before I continue with the Explorer story, I'm gonna take 60 seconds to thank our sponsor of this video, Keeps. Keeps offers an easy, private, and custom online subscription service that makes it so much more convenient and affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness from the comfort of their home. With Keeps, you'll get clinically proven treatments that will address your hair loss and your plan for hair regrowth delivered discreetly to your door. And again, it's totally custom. 
All you need to do to get your treatment plan, which is recommended by a licensed medical provider, is complete in quick online consultation. Keeps offers both of the FDA-approved hair loss treatments, as well as a two-in-one gel that combines them. According to clinical studies, treatments offered by Keeps are 90% effective at treating hair loss and can increase hair growth by up to 35%. Plus, you can adjust, pause, or cancel your plan anytime. To date, Keeps has helped nearly 1 million men keep their hair and you can be next. Hair loss stops with Keeps. So for your special offer, or go to keeps.com slash Theo Harris. That's keeps.com slash Theo Harris. Thanks to uh, Keeps. Back to the Explorer. Now, fast forward to 1971, and Rolex does something really, really interesting, which, which brings us into this story a bit. Rolex puts the word to after a model. They'd go on to do it again with the GMT Master 2 in 1983, and with the Day Date 2 in 2008, and the Date Just 2 in 2009. But this time, unlike those other times where the 2 was signifying evolution, but really just of size is really the golden thread there. But this time, the first time in 1971, the 2 signified a whole new chapter, really a, what I think is, second pillar of the Explorer collection. And this Explorer 2 had a complete design change. We see a larger size, we see a 24-hour fixed bezel, we see a, a, a 24-hour hand. This was an entirely new watch and it was marketed for an entirely different sort of exploration, but exploration still, right? So it was within that same collection ethos, right? And that's an idea that we'll, that we'll get back to in a second. It's in the same collection ethos. The Explorer has an ethos. This wasn't for, you know, exploring the world's highest peaks. This was for cave spelunking. This was for, you know, cave exploring. And this new bezel and 24-hour hand were meant to keep these spelunkers oriented when in a cave, it would be very easy to lose track of day and night. From there, both the Explorer 1 and the Explorer 2 went on to have multiple iterations. They're still widely loved watches today. I've got one on the wrist. But it brings me to the question, why do I feel that the Rolex Explorer is the only true Rolex collection? Well, unlike the Submariner and the Daytona and the GMT, which come in multiple variations of the same watch, the Explorer has these two pillars. And it's those two pillars, right? The Explorer 1 and the Explorer 2 that make this collection the only true collection, or if I'm being a little bit less dramatic, the most dynamic collection right? The collection in the Rolex family that has truly explored its purpose, be it ex you know, exploration. Now, all that history in the rear view, let's take a second and, and have a look at what I think is just a really beautiful design. At 42 millimeters, this modern Rolex Explorer 2 wears really well on my wrist. I actually think this wears just as well as my 40 millimeter GMT. And that's, I think, because the proportions are totally different. The, the lugs are sloped differently. Um, the watch just wears so well. But what makes this particular Rolex Explorer 2 polar special is is the patina. It's not a word that you hear very often in the modern world. Patina is something that we're used to seeing in the vintage Rolex world, be it on GMTs with faded bezels or be it on Submariners where, you know, blue dials went purple. So many different examples in, in the vintage Rolex world. But in the modern Rolex world, patina is unheard of until we found this watch. The Explorer 2 text on a Rolex Explorer has been orange. Uh, since 1971, there was a break there in the 90s, I believe, where the text went red, and those watches are great. But orange is the color for the Rolex Explorer 2 text. And yet on this example, and this is something I've never seen before, the orange text has faded to yellow. Right? That means that there was some sort of a faulty sealant or paint and the exposure from, from the elements, from what I hear, I, I purchased this watch uh, from, from a golfer who spent a heck of a lot of time on the course. Do I know that this happened in the golf course? I do not. But it does make it part of an interesting story and, and it's certainly a contributing factor at all that time in the sun, you know, on, on, the, on, the, the, on the green would certainly do it, right, at scale. But, um, but more so, 
just taking a look at the beauty, the rarity. Um, I think this watch is great. It was the inspiration for today's video. I am not an explorer. I don't have the spirit of exploration in that sense, in that very, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of more brutal sense. I love exploring, I love traveling, but I like to do it a little bit, you know, uh, I'm more of a, I'm more of a wear a day date or a Calatrava to explore, you know, new Spanish cities than I am, you know, climb the Matterhorn kind of guy. I don't think that I, I don't think I could, I don't think I could do it, but I do have the ability to, to see something beautiful and special and, 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 and be able to, you know, recognize it and appreciate it. And I wanted to share this watch with you. So I'm glad this watch is on my wrist because this video wouldn't have happened without this watch. This watch is for sale in the Theo and Harris watch shop. I don't think you'll, I don't think you'll ever find another one like this. Um, so whether, if it's your style, head on over. If it's not, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like more content, go ahead and subscribe to our podcast at The Zero. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much.